up in this week's Retro Robin Show, we have a look at this new game, Alien Girl, where I've got the deluxe edition, and I'll show you all the ins and outs of that one. We go over to my usual standard place, where we do all the filming from, to have a look at some more games from out of Crash 91. That's right, we're going back to issue 91. And of course, we're going to tie up a couple of loose ends, as well as some more Commodore vs. Spectrum. So join me now on the Retro Robin Show. A little bit of nostalgia for the weekend. Who knows, you might even enjoy it. Yes, it's time for the Retro Robin Show with me, Wayne. So, welcome to a show that goes back in time, or forward in time now, as we're going to come a little bit more recent, when we go back to issue number 91, August 1991. <laughs> 91 in 1991 I couldn't have timed or planned that better but nevertheless I did we're going to review some great games uh, from out of that magazine and see if they stand the test of time a couple of them I've not played before so bear with me they're all very difficult nowadays um, I guess I kind of got used to easy stuff like platformers but there's no platformers today it's all a bit of a challenge for me and I'm willing to face up to that of course and we're going to have a look at a new game that I've received in the post, Alien Girl. We're going to clip to a clip of the clip of the Alien Girl in a moment of me unpacking it because I've actually got the Deluxe Edition, which is like a big box. One second. You may see this in mirror because I can't swap this camera around just yet. That's the Deluxe Edition. Big! In the days when we could get the games that wouldn't fit in your case because games came in so many different sizes. Oh well. <laughs> I watched the Retro Cave the other day and I saw his draw that he pulled out um, where he had all the Code Masters games and he had a game there that he said was quite rare and I thought to myself, well I've got about two copies of that already. <laughs> um, but I've been looking for it and I found them out and I thought, well I didn't realise this was rare <laughs> because I didn't really like the game, we'll get on with it anyways. That's the uh, Retro Man Cave or RMC, which is also what I'm a patron for. You may see my name up in writing towards the end, uh, Cave Dweller. Oh, that is me indeed. Good, so uh, why not become a patron? And let's get him to a thousand uh, patrons in order to support what is effectively a new retro museum. And he's doing a sterling job there, and uh, I'm looking forward to probably paying that place a visit myself. Uh, yeah, true. Also, I'm patron of Mark Fixie stuff, but the less said about that, the better. <laughs> um, what else we got? We got some more Commodore vs. Spectrum. <laughs> and I haven't picked the game yet, but by the time this show is finished, we'll have uh, played a few games and we'll come to the Commodore vs. Spectrum and see which version is the best. Does the Commodore take it or does the Spectrum take it? And I don't know why I'm doing that with my head from side to side. It's something I do naturally, but I'm going to do it anyways because it looks good. Well, there's nothing about me that looks good, but who cares? I'm a funny guy. What the heavens? Um, what else is there? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty much it. We've got all... Oh, yeah, there's a puzzle game I found. A puzzle game. And also, uh, something to do with a shark that was given a crash smash. We're going to go back as well. We're going to tie up a loose end with um, BC Bill, which I wanted to review, but I couldn't get it to work. Well, I actually got it to work now. So we're going to give that a marks out of 10 rating. So we're going to go back to a previous crash. A bit of everything. Yeah, so let's move on to today's first new game. Right, we're going to have a look at this new game that I've received in the post. I was, this is my new games case. I like it because it's nice and clear, and as you can see, I've got my usual the Mr. Hair, Mr. Hair and the Fly Super Hair, Hardy, <laughs> you know, Hyperkill, Planet of Death, yeah, you got Savage Princess, Sophie, yeah, down the pipes is there as well. Oh, there's a classic in there just from, you know, Adi Tak, Psst, <laughs> Rainbow Edge, DX, Blocks. And of course some classic um, oh, games at the top there. And I'm going to try and put all my games in these open top clear cassette cases. So I thought I'd put this inside that case. Oh, 
Yeah, well, you get the mean. That's the game we're looking at now. Alien Girl. This is the Deluxe Edition from Bitmap Software. So I thought I'd show you what's actually in the Deluxe case. Forgive the gloves because I do like to look after my stuff. We'll start by taking the lid off. Nice little gentle shake there. And there we go. It's a solid, good quality case. There's the artwork on the front. Look, it's a demo scene. <laughs> I'll put that to one side and cover my little blue spectrum up. It's feeling a bit blue. What do you get first of all? We get this inside there. Just just a promotional leaflet. Unbelievable as well. Bitmap and uh, Felixware. We get an alien sort of... You get the artwork on the front, but we get the... Uh, that's nice, isn't it? I don't like the folding, of course, but... You know, that's why I don't uh, completely fold it, you know, I just sort of bend it over. Some more promotional stuff. The booklet, of course. We have all the instructions. I don't want to show you too much. Which is great, isn't it, eh? Oh, look at that. Nice. And, of course, I've got that game as well, haven't I, on the original Redshift. Which I reviewed in an earlier episode of Retro Ruins. You get a little... Well, sticker if you like, but, you know. Get the badge. And, of course, you get a... Oh, little CD-ROM inside, I think. Is it a CD-ROM? Might be just the music, but, yeah, it's... Um, something for me to have... Uh, multimedia CD. So, uh, yeah, it looks like it's got CD-ROM on there, so... Um, yeah, so there's something for me to check out. So, putting that aside, let's have a look at the actual cassette itself, which is still in the cellophane. 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 Um, there's the case and the cover. Oops. Yeah, it's pretty well packaged and well presented, the Dulux edition. If you're just getting the cassette, of course, that's what you will get, which I will also get because I want to put that in this new games case and put the old games in a clear case as well eventually so there's your Dulux edition with all its glory and all the parts that came with it so let's move on now to actually have a look at the game itself you go 1 to 8k mode this may have 128k sound in it but we'll see for now I'm just gonna probably need to pretty sharply mute the music in the background of course because we don't want to get sound clash Quick brief look at the loading screen. There you go, the same as what's on the actual front cover. Nicely done. Of course, it's made with the NK1 engine, which is a development tool. Uh, usually, a lot of platformers have come from that. So, let's press enter. Let's actually go into this game. Oh, just straighten my speaker up because I just knocked it over. So, I... can you guess what the sound is in the background? Well, it's actually from a little demo. <laughs> which is a file you can download, which got four different AY tunes in from um, Tubby, I think it is, uh, originally this uh, sound, so Bitmaps up comes up, nice little promotional logo there and as you can see that's your first image you're going to get, I'm just turning the volume up of course nice sound isn't it, right you get to choose the language, we're going to go from obviously Spanish, because I'm Spanish um, and because uh, I'm really good at this, I'll go for normal difficulty. <laughs> and you all know I'm lying. And we've got the AY sound coming in there. And I don't know how well you can hear that because it seems quite a quiet AY recording. A little bit of a backstory. And it's very blue, isn't it? I mean, I know there's only. Cloyd blue and white there, but it sets us. <laughs> oh, that was a bit loud. <laughs> How dare you interrupt me? Interesting AY music. Let's hope that the actual AY music is probably not going to be in the game as well. for Kenston so we'll start with Kenston just to have a look at this game we're going to go through a couple of the screens 
And then I'm going to see, well, what I think of the game, to be honest. I'm not going to give it a rating. It's too new for me to do that. Um, or maybe I will. I'll give it a mark out of 10 on the initial first look. Um, until I've actually played it more, it would be unfair to give it a full rating. Um, so, yeah, I've only just recently got it this week. Um, I've had the file, but I prefer to buy the original software. And besides, it's a nostalgia thing, isn't it? If you're a collector like me, you're going to enjoy this sort of thing. And um, it's good that we're getting new software. Nearly, well, going on to 40 years, is it? 40 years on. <laughs> for the Sinclair Spectrum and of course there's new software for the next uh, which we're rapidly approaching the August but listen all good things come to those who wait so don't worry about the Spectrum next it'll uh, sort itself out and what we will receive is hopefully what everyone else has received a really well made quality product the experience of waiting for it makes the heart grow fonder I would say so, without any further to do, and I haven't said that in some while, but I thought I'd put it in today just for the hell of it, uh, let's play this game! We've got AY sound in the game by the sounds of it, which is good. Yes, indeed we have. Right, so, ah! The alien there is actually tracking your motion. Um, yeah. So we can move across that way, shall we? Okay, so we can fire. Oh, something, something bit me there. Oh, now they're just spawning out there, so that was probably not a good move. Let's move out of this room. Oh, something down there. Whoa, I'm being chased. And the music has changed. It's got a little bit more intense, hasn't it? Oh, I didn't know they could go over those green things. I thought that was a... Can I go over? Yes, I can. Oh, that's where they're coming from, that hole there. Okay. So what have I got to do? Kill as many as I can, or...? see a lot of dead bodies there what well, it seems to be like dead bodies ah I'm getting hit all over the shop <laughs> oh the exit have opened so I've done some out can now get out to the next screen I don't know what it was I did but it, whatever it was it must have been good okay oh more aliens so you've got a certain amount of time before they come out of the holes there's one there and there's one there, so you just best to keep shooting. Good thing is the bullets do travel the force. Oh, it's a xenomorph, isn't it? Now, if she's a girl and she's an alien, surely they should be friends. <laughs> oh, it doesn't work that well, does it? Ah, so I collected some of there. Oh, now that is obviously an egg, so you have to destroy it. And now it's destroyed, it shouldn't hurt me, should it? Yeah, it still hurts me, so... Ah, acid for blood. And I think my sister's got the same. <laughs> it's not a medical condition. <laughs> right, so we've got collected something there. We're moving on to another screen. Oh. I love the music in the background. It's got a bit of an intensity about it, hasn't it? All right, well, I don't know what I did there, but they've sort of gone stationed me, so I must have been, was it when I... Oh, I don't think I'm going to last too much longer. Somehow this is not going well, right, okay. Oh, he's chased me, he's worked his way around, hasn't he? Yeah, because they're coming out of that hole, aren't they? I've collected something there, so... Um... Can we... Die, Xenomorphs. Killing more than they did in the uh... Can we go? Oh, I don't think we can go downwards, so. Oh, I'm not going to play it too much longer as I'm slowly working out what to do. And I think we've got to go back to this screen, haven't we, before we can move on anywhere. Uh, yeah, 
that must just keep respawning that egg. There's an exit there which I've got through. Oh. Now I presume if you don't get rid of them eggs, you're going to get a xenomorph come out of them. Those little spider type things that... Yeah, okay, well look. Need to push that here, and there's one. Now is he going to chase me? Well these are. made me jump <laughs> um, okay first impressions I'm well impressed um, graphics are very nice um, slowly working out what to do and uh, yeah I've, I like it I like the whole package the deluxe edition is great the tape itself is well done as you expect from bitmap soft um, available for you to buy now so what am I going to say about it well I'll tell you what I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10 which is a very high rating and not full 10 out of 10 I can't give it that without playing it a little bit further but yeah top down similar to gauntlet in the view you've got but um, moves a reasonable space change of the screen is quite nice and uh, yeah I think it's a pretty good game so for that reason, I advise that you give it a go. Available on purchase for download. Remember to tip the code as if you do. And I hope you enjoyed that game. And I'm sorry I couldn't show you more as much as I did. Right. While the music is playing in the background, let's go back to August uh, 91. And uh, to crash from that particular period. There's a loading screen. Um, by Codemasters, as it happens, and we just mentioned the dig draw with all the Codemasters games from RMC, um, Retro Man Cave, of course, and this was a 2 99 game, so it was a budget game, but most of Codemasters games was budget. Presentation 55%, graphics 57%, sound was only 50%. It's all the 50s, I'm afraid. Uh, playability, 53%. Addictive qualities was given 55%. So its overall rating was... 59%. Let's zoom and get straight into the game. So the first thing you see, you get... Um, <laughs> like that. Code, Steve. <laughs> and all that you need there, information, is on the, uh, the high school sheet. Um... Press a key, you can define your keys, so we'll, we'll start by uh, defining the keys because you've only got a speed up, a slow down, a wheelie, and a jump key, and that is it, four keys in total. And then, with that said, this is a difficult game, so it was an uh, overall rating of 59%. Let's see what we think about it, give it five to start the game. So, first thing you do is you speed up. And I crash. <laughs> and I do remember how difficult this game was, so we'll try again. The good thing is though, it does move you on to the next bit of flat ground. Ah, well, how do I jump? Is it up? Must be up on the joystick. I tried to wheelie instead of jumping, I think, so. Okay, we can. You've got a certain time here, as you can see. That's it, and of course I've jumped straight into the rocks and I've come off again. In fact, I've come off this bike more times than I've ever come off my bike in, the, in my life. Um, well, I was hoping this was going to be a little bit like ATV, similar to the, by the pictures. And I almost made it. First, yeah. I think that's going to be game over, isn't it? Surely it's a three strikes and you're out now, okay. Oh. You have to hold up. Once you get enough speed, you have to hold up to get the wheelie to go. And I'm rapidly running out of time, so if I don't get a whittle on... I almost, oh yes, I've made it. I've made the first two jumps. Okay, so it is tricky, but you can get the hang of it after a few goes. And I'm, now I'm running out of time, I've got the hang of it, and I'm finally having a good run. Took me a little bit of time, but... Okay, should we give it another go? So that first part, getting into the game, is the hardest part. You know, you're trying to learn it at a, a rapid space, so let's try once more. 
This time we'll build a bit of speed up. Yes. Ah, gotcha. You have to give the button a good, oh, a good uh, press. I'm not just as time does go down a little bit, doesn't it? But you don't need to jump over them. You just need to go over them quite slowly, don't you? That's right. Go over the, the rocks quite slowly. Give yourself a bit of terrain. Ah, there you go. Okay, well that's good because it'll move me on to the next bit anyways. And I've still got a bit of time. Oh, I couldn't get my wheel up. Couldn't get get your wheels in line. Get your wheels in line. Yes, um, hardly Thunderbirds I go, but you know. Now I did this quite well last time, didn't I? Oof. Am I going to make it in time? Who knows? Well, I've got. Oh, well, I've already got further. We will move me on. Does it take the time still ticks down while it moves you on to the next bit of flat ground? Which is hardly unfair. But. Oh, if you press jump, it'll throw you off the bike. So, um, that in mind, I've run out of time, so I'm not going to make it, but I bet this is a bit of a downhill. Bit of a tough challenge, though. Okay, so we've given effectively a 6 out of 10 rating by Crash, and um, I'm not going to argue with that. Um, it's a shame, because if it wasn't so difficult, or if it gradually got harder, which is what I like the games to do, gradually go harder stage by stage, not be ridiculously hard to start with. Um, the only game that you can ever appreciate doing that was Manic Miner, because that first screen was extremely hard for a good reason it was to get you into the game and then once you get over that first screen you was able to go a few screens before it gradually got harder until you got to the solar panel plant where you knew you wasn't going to do any good anyway <laughs> only joking i have completed maddie minor <laughs> to my credit <laughs> but that was many happy hours of playing and uh, the challenge to beat my friends so what am i going to give this a rating well they gave it six out of ten i'm totally agreeing six out of ten Let's move on to the next game then. We'll try the tap to see if there's a, a loading screen on it, of course. So we'll try that first of all. But this is the game. Um, because it's quite late on, we do believe that there could be an AY tune in this. I'm not 100% sure. Oh, it's a blank. We could have auto focus problems. Let's see what's going on. So we've got a sound, it's just gradually starting up. We've got O for options. And we've got D for undable keys. If you listen to it, I'll just move the sound in the background. I like the writing. It's stylish, so we can write. Left, down, up and fire. And pause. Uh, we'll have E for exit or quit. Press fire to start. Well, I'm not overwhelmed by the AY sound in this, I've got to be honest. Um, right, before we play, let's give you the game. Alright, I'm sorry. It kicks into life all of a sudden. Let's turn that down. Oh, I'm reaching for the volume control. Not overwhelmed by the AY, and then he comes up with a bait like that. Uh, I suppose I should have been uh, a little bit more patient. High Tech was the producer. The cost would have cost you two pound ninety nine. Presentation was given seventy nine percent. Graphics was given eighty one percent. Sound was given seventy percent. Of the sounds of it, it sounds like a good game. <laughs> Playability 83%, addictive quality is 85% and anything over the 75% mark usually is a good game. This was given an overall rating of 84%. Turn it back up. Bit of a slow starter but once the BAY tune got going uh, in the background it's not bad at all. Fire to start, let's go. Password, we don't need one. Name. I think you can only have four letters, so. And uh, no, there's no AY actually in the game. We'll put Thunderbirds back on. Right. What you've got to do is rotate this square into. Like that, effectively. Making it a full circuit. 
you can collect things along the way and if you're sharp enough you can ooh, you can collect other things as well so um, ooh, how close was that right we're gonna wait for an next bonus you've only got a certain amount of time he's running down before you can complete the level and I think this one does this one. There we go. First level complete. Box complete. I'll move on to the next screen. Different uh, screen altogether. So you've got to be quick as well. Um, which, you know. But there is a technique you can use as a block like that. You know what I mean? So you. And in this case, I'm going to have to use a block because. Uh, I could be trapped. Time's running down fast, so we need to move a whittle on here. Oh. And, oh there, that was a bad move, wasn't it? Stop time! Okay, please, let me get to that quick. I need that, I need that. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I ain't happy about it. I could release this guy, but... And now, look, the time's being used because I'm getting blocked in. Oh! Fiddlesticks! <laughs> and that's the closest you ever get. Ah! That's not fair, is it? Oh, because he died, didn't he? Okay, I'll get you. Right, now then. Let's get up there. Why do they always go in the way that I want them to go? Oh, stop time, please, stop time. Yes, that'll do, thank you very much. Is that a bomb? No, we don't need to go there just yet, do we? We do. The time's going down fastly. Well, while he's down there... Now, what's left to do? Because I can't see anything. Oh, they destroy all the things. Yes, I can see one more. We'll go down to there. We can't stop time because we're done. That's the next level complete. Okay, so let's move on to the next screen. And, uh, oh, perhaps I shouldn't have done that. I'll wait till he bounces out of the way and try and get up there. Oh. Oh, I was so close to that stop time. Oh, it's a shame he doesn't let you carry on. Game over. But you get the general idea. I have gone a fair few screens further than that. But obviously, as always, when you're recording, it doesn't quite work out that way. So they've got a total overall rating of 84%. And to be honest, it was a deserved 84%. Um, I liked it, I liked it a lot. It's a shame he didn't have AY in the game, but he did have a good AY tune at the start of the game, which I hadn't heard that much of it before because I got straight into playing the game and I heard that beat kicking in for the first time because I'd already made my mind up what the rating was going to be. And now because he's got a decent tune and not just a boring slow one, I'm going to give you the extra half percent because I was going to totally agree with Crash, but no, I'm going to give that a 9 out of 10. For the puzzle game, it wasn't half bad. <laughs> Let's get on with the next one. Sky High Stuntman, another Codemasters game. So, what can I tell you about this game? Cost was $2.99, presentation 50%, graphics 49%, sound was given 51%. That's not faring well at the moment, it's all the 50s, isn't it? Playability 54%, addictive quality is 52%, and guess what? <laughs> its overall rating was 51%. So, yeah, indeed, it wasn't very good in its rating. We'll have a brief look at the loading screen. You know, I like loading screens that load in black and white and then put the colour in afterwards, don't you? But, um, Thought you'd have a, an accelerated 7 megahertz loading speed there for you. Codemasters usually do do great loading screens, don't they? And guess what? They haven't let us down there because that is a really nice 
Nice screen indeed. Not a single bit of cool clash there, is there? Oh, a bit on the tail. But yeah, this is the game we're about to play. So let's uh, zoom forwards a little bit in time till it's loaded where we can actually have a go at the game. Nice opening demo there. Codemasters come up, circled, and then we're actually into the game. Oh, sound clash. We have sound clash. Where's the mute button? One or two players. Now you can use the keyboard, which is QAOP and space. Automatically, by default, sex uh, sets itself to Kemston, so you don't have to select Kemston. All you need to do now is press the start. So we got a nice opening uh, AY tune on this one. Well, it was 91. And if they wasn't making use of the AY chip then, then they was just wasting the precious resources in the latest computer. Obviously, if you still got a vintage Spectrum, you wouldn't get this, but, you know, doesn't matter. The games would still play the same. Okay, right, there we go, select the keys. So we've got to shoot them up basically. Uh, you're the helicopter, and you're a stuntman, so you're going to get takes in this. Oh, the first bullet, take two. I didn't manage. And even though you start off at a new place, oh, come on. Pattern recognition helps. If you play it lots, it gets a little bit easier because you know where to approach. You do have a slight bit of immortality while you're uh, flying between the ships. That's it. We're getting a little bit further now. That's it. Oh, cut. Take two. Action. But you can only fire one bullet at a time. I like the shadow effect. Looks like a key, actually. <laughs> the shadow looks like a bit of a... Oh, didn't see that coming, did you, Wayne? No, obviously not. All the takes have gone. Okay. Right, so how do I get around this? Can you fly over the bike before I... Right. Game over. Cut! That was the shortest game ever, so... <laughs> Let's give it another go. See if we can do better the second time round. Who knows, I might even do so. Theme one, chapter and action. Well now I've had a little bit of a play, I do remember playing this before, I've got this as well on the original tape but never played it, it was one of them I got in the car boot sale. Oh. It's a little bit slow for a helicopter, it's a little bit slower in moving, if it was a little bit quicker then I'd be great, so let's get rid of that tank. Well got rid of two tanks, that's good, now there's that boat, that's it. Get that out of the way, the plane comes from behind, okay got that, get rid of him. Two planes there. Ah, oh, I couldn't get the two bullets. You're best to avoid things that are shooting at you, aren't you? Oof. Gotta watch the boat from behind. Ah, oh, I moved into the bullet, didn't I? Now you gotta remember you start as an invincible. There, the boat comes from behind, doesn't it? So. Does it come from behind? Yes, indeed it does. What's the bullets? Ah, oh, you can't fly across that bit then, I take it. Come on, one more go. I've seen enough. <laughs> I know I'm going to need to put his poke in that in order to cheat the game. Um, love the use of the colours at the start, I love the loading screen, it's a decent little shoot em up. I like the fact for a shoot em up it's got a nice AY tune in the background. Um, this only got 51% and I thought it was better than that, I thought the sprites were okay, the shadow effect does look like a key upside down. Um, I could get into that, I really think I could do better than I actually did actually recording, so I'm going to give it a few more goes. But I'm going to give that a 7 out of 10. 
and hopefully you might not have seen this game before if you have I might have reminded you of it and you might want to play it again and that's what this show is about because we might come across one or two hidden gems nostalgia little nuggets of gold that have been secretly stashed away in a crash magazine review somewhere or even a Yul Sinclair which we'll go to in the next year we'll be going to the Yul Sinclair uh, reviews of games of course and comparing them to the crash we won't be doing that for this year though and that's way 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 into the future of course yeah well be it to try 7 out of 10 and of course you can get that free on download let's move on to another game then this one is a bit of a good one but didn't get a good rating Chrysler by Ocean Software and re-released by the Hit Squad and it got went down to a budget price at $2.99. Presentation was given 50. Well, no, sorry. Budget price of $3.99. I can make mistakes. I am a lad. <laughs> Reading the wrong part. I do write this. Uh, research is key. Right, what are we going to say about this game? Yeah, re-released by the Hit Squad, originally by Ocean. Presentation 70%. Graphics 68%. Sound 62%. Playability 63%. Addictivity. Oh, 60%. Overall rating, 65%. Also, we're going to play the 128k version, which does indeed have a voice sound in it. In the main part of the game, maybe not. I'm not sure. We'll find out now. We'll have a brief look at the loading screen. Ah, there you go. There's your loading screen. Very nicely done, of course. Konami. Straight into the AY sound, you've got redefinable keys, which I'm going to need. Of course, when you redefine the keys on this game, your sound disappears. This is a lot for the game, to be fair. Well, I never defined the keys. I don't know if I should use chemistry. No, I've got everything sorted out. So, redefine the keys again, make sure I've got them right. Because there's nothing worse than pressing the wrong key. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go back to the silence mode. Right, so it's down, up, fire, and oh, you see, this is what confuses me. We're going to have one for jump. Why not? So, considering it's got great A1 chain, I must have been. I normally have died a few times, but I have um, simplified the game. Let's <laughs> just put it that way. My cone graphics. Oh, I actually died. See, I didn't. I wasn't completely invincible. Uh, you can see the pokes taking effect there, can't you? <laughs> and this is why I need the pokes, because I'm a, a devil for dying with these sort of games. And now we've got to destroy that at the end, so it's loaded bullets. And hopefully it hasn't crashed, which it probably has done, but you know. Hit that target at the back before you can move to the next section. Don't worry about the scores on the side, we don't need them. I'm definitely not immune to bullets. Oh, it's game over! <laughs> well, I think you all know what that game's about. Ah, oh, can't delete. We've all seen that game before, um, there's many levels to it. I think it was uh, written by Paul Owen, and I think it was converted, but I'm not 100% sure on this. I think it was a Jim Bagley, um, so I think he did the conversion for the Spectrum for it. And um, usually what he touches turns to gold, 
Um, so yeah, well, what do I think of that game? Well, to be fair, the rating that was given in Crush, 65% for such a big game. Um, obviously, the arcade version was what he was taken from. I'm a better player than that normally. When I'm not recording, I can do this quite well. I'm going to give that a seven and a half out of ten. Even though I'm rubbish at it. And even my cheats didn't work properly. I didn't even poke the memory right. So, well, you know, who knows? Let's have a look at one more before we move on to something else. <laughs> okay, uh, it was £2.99 Atlantis, so it was a reasonably priced game. However, <coughs> be warned if you're going to play this game at all and uh, you may have brought it back in the past, you would have been highly disappointed because the level of skill needed was ridiculous. It's really, really hard. Hence the reason why, once again, I've been hacking and I've simplified the game for myself to play while I'm recording, of course. Generally speaking, I don't cheat at anything. Presentation 56, graphics 56, Ooh. sound 37. Why? Because there's no actual sound in the game, despite the fact that this came out late in the Spectrum life. With no real use of the AY sound as a background music, which is a bit of a shame. Not that I've noticed anyways. I've tried other versions. Maybe there is an AY version sound out there. I don't know. Playability 45%. Addictive qualities 48%. Its overall rating then was 50%. I've already put my name up there because I've already completed it. Keys are QAOP and M. And I've put the time frame. So you start nice colourful. No colour class because it's sort of blacked out. I mean, you can almost see that there's going to be no colour class in the game. Other than black. So, this may look like I haven't taken any hits. But believe me, that bit you have to jump over there is quite hard. And I can get as bad as this far. Because what I find really hard, even though it's nicely done colourful and a nice tile background as well, it's the scrolling. I mean, you can't really hit that fish even. So, um, it scrolls and then before you realise it, you've moved into the way, the path of an enemy even. And you can't fire at a certain height, so to get them fish that's coming across the screen must be really hard, do you know what I mean? You've really got to sort of time it. Don't get me wrong, it's, it looks nice, doesn't it? But believe me, if you've got this far in the game, you've done well. Now, you can't really get them, so you sort of have to jump over them. Once again, you can't, you've got to jump over those, because you can't shoot them. And the bullets will come across quicker than you can imagine. Big jump there. Okay, we're doing alright. Okay. Get rid of the witch. Get rid of the skeleton. And now you can see I've changed my weapon a little bit. And the tile map on the background will change slightly. You have to give it a noble effort because. Graphically, it's very, uh, well, it's very pleasing, but it's just playability is, well, as anyone has ever probably played it will tell you it's ridiculously hard. For instance, that would have been a death normally. And we'll move on to a little bit. So it's pretty much the same all the way through. Two levels really, and then it's the game complete. And the, even that part where you shoot them, you get a treasure when you shoot something. You can collect them, but if you shoot them over water, you lose that treasure and those uh, those particular items, for instance. Right there, I would have been absolutely dead. And there, of course, I'd have been dead as well. <laughs> and, of course, if you leave something, you've gone too far you can't go backwards on the screen of course like there I've lost that treasure but nevertheless and I've lost that as well because it just appeared too late but 
We're going for it, aren't we? If it was a little bit less harsh on the, you know, the scrolling, the scrolling could have been done smoother, and I'm sure it could have been. Um, I think it was probably, it looks a little bit rushed towards the end, you know what I mean, because that horrible scrolling effect is dreadful. But we'll see another sequence in a moment where we check the tile map will change in the background, of course. Ah, now if that scrolls across, I won't. Ah, you've got a certain amount of time to collect them. That's terrible, isn't it? And there's your new tile background where you're inside it. Well, it looks to be like a castle. Uh, we can just literally scroll around, killing things. And this is all the game is. And eventually you'll come to the end and of course you're going to complete it. Oh, an arrow. Anyway, click the treasure. Let's kill him and then let's give it a rating. So Crash gave this a 50% overall rating, I totally agree, 5 out of 10, it's because it's way too hard, there's a lack of sound, which is a shame, but the look of the game was very nice. The plane of it, well, I've said it before, it's too hard, way too hard. Um, give it a go, tell me what your opinions are, please leave a comment and um, I'd like to hear from you if you've played this game. Uh, is there anybody out there that actually likes the game and uh, did they complete it without any cheats or hacks or pokes? Because there's no way I could do it. <laughs> right, we're going to zoom back to an old edition of Crash just to cover uh, some ground that I missed because I couldn't get the game to work. But now I've got the game to work, so let's have a look back in the past as we go back to an early edition of Crash. BC Bill. We're going back to 1984, uh, this was in the issue number 9 of Crash, October Crash was 85 pence, incidentally 91 was £2.20, so you can see the price difference, uh, but £2.20 you did get a lot less magazine, but you did have a cover tape with um, Poker Armour and a few free games of course. Uh, one was, um, I forgot, I forgot, Shark Attack something like that but um, we'll come back to that so what's about this game well it was by Imagine it was £5.50 the use of computer was given 75% graphics was given 78% playability 77% getting started a lot of ratings a lot of ratings in the early issues, issues of Crash uh, it's easy for me to trip over and say it was um, 76% addictive quality 69% value for money 64% overall rating 73% Oh yes, 91 uh, honourable mention to LED Storm, which got 90% in uh, Crash 91. Uh, that was the Crash Smash from out of that issue, which I forgot to mention. So we're going to load this in 48k, because it is only a 48k game. It can probably be played in 1 to 8, 128k, ain't too sure. There's the loading screen. Basic book. Doesn't need to be any more than that, does it really? It's prehistoric, so the game graphics itself is going to be a little bit prehistoric. I'm already jealous because he's got that much hair. An iron bleeper sound! Okay, we're going to set two for Kempston. And now, we'll compress Y to start the game. I think it's Y or O, was it? Sat the last time, I couldn't get it started. And we're in the game, right. You've got a club, you grab your lady, you bash her, and you return to the cave. I'm not sure that's what you meant to do, but that's the bit I've been having fun with the most. So now I don't think this should be pretty politically correct. What have we got tonight, Tony? I think you're meant to get rid of these. Look at the bad guys. Got 
one. Aha. Uh -huh. Food. Oh, the dinosaurs get you, do they? I like that scene where he fades away to skeleton. I don't think you meant to get them. I just think you meant to get the nasties around it, but... <laughs> what the hell is that? Did you have... Well, I know you had one-legged turkles, eh? Is that what it is? What is it? I'm missing more than I'm hitting anything. Oh, the turtles kill you today. Okay. 73% overall rating, I don't think so. But then again, it was the early days of Crash. And it was the early days of game. So maybe back then, this was the forefront of programming. <laughs> Personally, um, I'm going to give that a 6 out of 10. Okay, so now, as you know, uh, this show's run on original hardware. For Commodore vs Spectrum, we're going to use a real Commodore. And for Spectrum, we're using the Endo clone at the moment, but we will switch over to the Toast Rack. Uh, in the background, for a change, we've got the Omni providing the sound on the big TV there. And I'm thinking I'm going to need a tissue because um, I've had a tough ache all week. Let's get on with it then. Commodore vs Spectrum coming up now. Star Wars! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I've been reluctant to pick this one because the arcade version was great because she was in that light, you know, and I was using the force and. Um, that came across well, didn't it? Let's try that again, shall we? Because you were sitting down in the arcade machine and you was in clothes, sort of, you had that feeling that you was actually in an X-Wing fighter. And I love the arcade machine, however, I didn't have too many pennies at the planet, so I had to be pretty good pretty fast. The Spectrum version, on the other hand, could be quite a different story. With this game, you can redefine the keys, so indeed I will do that, because I do not like the fact that you press up to go down and down to go up. So now, to go up, we're going to press down, and to go down, we're going to press up, so as it goes right. I know. I know it's pull down to go up and push down to, on the joystick, but I'm not using the joystick, so I'm using the keys. We're going to have a look at this game, and then we're going to compare it to the same game on the Commodore. And I think we will need to mute the music in a moment. We'll turn it down at least, so let's just... Uh, down the volume a little bit because this has the sound effects we want you to hear because that is part of the crucial thing so zero to start the game and you get a nice intro sequence on both the systems like that spectrum one is very nicely done but we're going to start the fire right you get to pick your levels and if you can look at that little x there that's nicely done targeting system And of course there's your X-Wing fighters which are great and of course you get those classic stars that are going forwards. Now there were many versions of Star Wars on the Commodore and I picked the one that was closest to this game version so if there are a closer to this sort of game version that you know of please leave your comments below and as always if you've not seen the retro robins show before it's a little bit of light entertainment i'm trying to provide free of charge for the weekend however if you wish you can become a patreon and uh, help me to create more interesting comment 
content like this about the games. Okay, so you can see the Death Star was briefly, briefly there, but you need to shoot all of the um, the fighters first. And if you hit the, uh, I think you can just about get him, can't you? Can I, can I get him in the past? No, that's the Vader one, isn't it? That's it. We'll zoom in, we'll find ourselves into the trenches, and that's as bad as far as I get on the Commodore, so that's as far as I'm going to get on this one. Yeah, so the first one, you've got nice background sprites, it's very similar to the arcade, isn't it? Very similar. A little bit jerky on the movements there, if you can see, it's just sort of, the lines aren't like 100% clearly smooth, but that's not too bad. Uh, your guns do overheat though, so you have to... Uh, Fire away! And now you get to shoot the boxes on the side in the first level already, so yeah, which is supposed to be the gun turrets, which is slightly better on the arcade there than the am on this version. Still, it's not a bad conversion, and uh, I personally, personally, I'm tripping over my words now, it's not good. Personally like 3D Star Strike because even though that wasn't a Star Wars official game, I liked it. Game over! Let's have a look at the Commodore version, shall we? And of course, a little bit different. And what we'll do is we'll start the game from scratch, so we'll reset it. Um, we'll start the game exactly as it loads on the Commodore. I'm using the, uh, the the flash module at the back rather than the tape, of course. I could use the tape loading, I suppose, but it's not the same as it, so... And it's an Atari version. Bit of seed sound, not too much. effects there just oh, don't know what you think but I don't like their X wings they're a bit more fulfilled but um no whatever it is cluster of whatever it is they're firing at you it's okay but it's so gradually it's, it's really easy to get to, get used to And I'm using, of course, the yours joystick on this one, so you know the arcade pro. Come on, man, you can hit him. Got him. Remember to shoot the bullets because it gets your shield down. You can note the pattern that they're actually travelling in, it helps you to shoot them. And then we're in the trenches, a uh, little bit less, but the, the actual trench moves slightly better and it's a slightly wider screen on the Commodore, which is a plus on this one. But I think I was meant to shoot those shields there. The sound of the, uh, the shooting on this though, to be fair, it's a nice laser sound. Right, come on, we can get this. Can we get towards the end at all? Still got two shields left, so I'm doing okay. You need to shoot the squares at the bottom, otherwise, you're just going to go through them. I'm going to die anyways, but you get the general idea. I don't think I'm going to destroy this Death Star on this occasion, I'm afraid the. Uh, the dark side of the force is one, and um, I've come to my conclusion. And in playing that one, and in playing the spectrum one, I know which one I prefer. So, 
Hold on, here comes my verdict. Quite a load of the loading screen on the Spectrum because I quite like the loading screen. Yeah, I prefer the Spectrum. Why? <laughs> well, I like the bleeper sound. Even though it's not um, AY sound, it's got a good bleeper starting sound to it. And um, it's Atari, it is the same game, of course. And uh, let's go for it again, shall we? Let's give it one more go. We'll read if well, we'll go for Kempston. Why not? Why not try it on the Kempston joystick? Uh, I'll explain why. The starting sequence this bit you didn't get on the Commodore where he was able to pick. But I like the colours, the bold colours of the, the lasers. I like I like the fact the ships get larger rather than just one size. And the the bullets that they fire is like a cluster of five. Um, but I like the way that they the explosion sort of, you know, in that 3D graphical way it's done. Also on the arcade where they sort of split apart. Um, because of that reason, I thought the Spectrum version was a better one. And... Um, yeah, okay, the Commodore had a merit to it, had a slightly wider trench, but this is as close to the arcade as I remember, and uh, I thought this was a pretty good game. Anyway, with that said, I do hope you enjoyed today's Retro Robin Show. Remember to like, share, and subscribe if you do. Uh, in the meantime, depending on when you watch this, have a nice working week or weekend. There's another show coming, of course. I've got loads of content to make, more Crash Magazine stuff. We'll have a look at something new, as, as always, as we do. And we'll even try up some new loose ends in the next show with a bit of luck and uh, go over one or two other things. The AY sounds, top 40 is due. Pick of the AY. I'm in progress of working on that. I'm just waiting on a few things. Big shout out to Matthew, who's going to help me out with that. And of course, um, Ricky, who's gave me some great bit music, and uh, I bought his CD, which I think is pretty good. Uh, I use it when I'm doing some soldering and put it on in the background. It's good. Focuses the mind in the meantime. Thanks to all my new subscribers. Thank you all for watching. Do hope you join me again. In, but for me, Red Robins, Red Tri Robins, have a good retro weekend. I really need to get a drink. <laughs> Take care and bye for now.